Today's project on Autopalooza is I'm gonna give this tray a facelift. Done two pours on it, not real happy with it, but I do have some spots here that I think a dragon might look really good with. So we're gonna do some drawing on it, kind of like this. All right, let me get set up. Howdy, howdy, this is Clara Lawrence, and this is the piece I did for Artapalooza this week. So, as the intro said, I had a pour that just didn't work out well. I tried to save it and do more of the background color. That didn't work out well either. So, I did have some, oh God, my son is making faces at me and messing me up. <laughs> Go away. Oh, now he's making faces. Big time. Anyway, okay. So, I'm not looking at him. I'm not looking at him. <laughs> the pour itself had some really nice cell actions that was in a line. And I thought that would look really good going down the nose. So, that's kind of where I focused on. And this is a piece I did a while ago where I used both the chrome marker and a Posca pen in black. And it worked really, really well on the resin. Now, I do think I have a little bit of problem, and I'll get into this a little bit later on with the Posca pens. And now he's tickling my neck. Go away, son. <laughs> At any rate, so first things first. Let me get back to square one again. Um, I doodled out a kind of a rough draft of my dragon, did some tweaks, and I did this in a chalk marker. Now, keep in mind that the chalk marker can wipe off either with a dry cloth or get a wet towel kind of a thing. But I started off with the chrome pen. This, and these are the Molotol chrome markers, which I love. They look so good in resin. However, when you do wipe it off, sometimes the residue of the chalk goes on top of the Molotol. So you'll see me um, re kind of re-inking some of the areas where the, uh, the, uh, chrome, uh, where the chalk marker did that. Um, so next time what I'll probably end up doing is I will go in with the, the skinny version of the chrome marker just to get my lines in there, clean off the chalk, and then go back over it with the thicker marker. And I think that will solve my problem for the next time. But However, I'm still happy with the end result. I just went over some of the areas again with the marker to rectify that problem. So... I go again with all the sews. Ignore that, please. <laughs> I am basically drawing my main color in with the chrome, and then I'll go back through and layer the black underneath it. And that's what I did with the horse. It wasn't planned that way. It was what happened to us is when I did the silver pin on the the resin originally it looked really really good it had that mirrored like shine to it but it was getting lost with all the busyness of the resin I thought I gotta make this pop a little bit how am I gonna do this and so I ended up putting a black line next to it kind of similar to what Jeff does he, he's really good at putting colors next to other colors to make some colors pop and so that's kind of what I did there um, Right now I'm going in and just doing a little bit. I like doing crosshatch, almost like a minimal crosshatch, enough to give it a little bit of shape and form, a little bit of an interest. So I'm doing that right now and starting to build up my form just, just a little bit. This is more of an illustrative style, not realistic, but... Yeah, kind of leaning towards the illustrative style, and that goes in with my background because I have a strong background in advertising and illustration, and I did a lot of line art illustration for uh, my business a while ago, and that has never left me. I always love drawing, and so I am happy to say that is happening more and more right now, and meaning doing the drawing and such. So. Right now, you see those uh, those white cells. I ended up adding an extra fin on his, I guess you could say the nose area or the blade of the um, the face, uh, you know, between the nose and the eye. And I added an extra horn there to kind of capture that 
those cells. And what I ended up doing is I wanted the white to kind of highlight that area there and draw attention to it. So, and I also debated on, you know, do I do smoke with resin or do I draw it out? And I ended up drawing it out real quickly because I wanted to do just a flood coat on top of this because I've already got, keep in mind, I've already got two layers of resin. So this tray is going to be heavy. Um, I've done some trays with two coats and a couple with three and three starts to get pretty heavy. Uh, you do four and this thing it might as well be like a paperweight because, you know, it really comes off pretty heavy. So I wanted to minimize that and that's why I decided to draw in the smoke. And I just, if you notice, I kind of follow the lines that the resin was doing where it goes kind of curly. And it just follows it along like as if the whole area is on fire a little bit. Granted, the fire is pink and orange, but hey, I'm working with it. What I got here. <laughs> So I'm starting to get a little bit of a style to my dragons, which I'm really, really stoked on. Would you believe the first dragons I've ever drawn were, what, about two years ago? No, about two and a half years ago. I'd always wanted to do dragon art, but it hadn't, but I've always drawn a lot of horse art. And it's kind of like a modified horse, but yet also in its own way I can tweak it and add horns to it. I could add scales to it. So I'm starting to have a little bit more fun with it and starting to bring in personality and characteristics. And I'm, I'm really, I'm kind of thrilled with it because it's, I'm a reference kind of artist. You'll get art, artists out there that can draw from their mind and imagination and then some that need reference materials and have to completely you know have to look at it over and over again and I'm a reference artist so for me going to imagination it is tricky and to be honest with you a lot of times when I start I'll have a variety of um, illustrations in front of me of other dragons because you know there's not any in real life except for you know maybe Komodo dragons those kind of things and so I've got these other artists but once I get kind of a loose rough and I mean seriously rough drawing I'll flip over that illustration and I won't look at it again and then I will expand on my drawing until I get a character that I'm really really happy with and then keep on building and building on top of that. So what I'm doing here with um, a thicker outline, this is a style that I started doing um, back in my illustration days. And I really, really like it. It draws your attention inward on the illustration and the finer lines on the inside. It kind of frames your character. And, and the looseness of the lines and such like that give it that, you know, that style and characteristic to the illustration too. And it ended up working out really, really well because now it's like, the orange and the yellow within his face looks like it's intentional to be there because that line is really framing that illustration. And we're about to wrap it up in uh, <laughs> uh, Artorama and Tish is giving me a hard time. She's like, eh, Claire, I wish you had this finished. And she was like, I, I think she was giving me a hard time more of the, uh, I want to see this thing finished. And cause she likes dragons too. And I'm still, she knows I've got a lot more work to do on this thing. But she still likes it when I do it. I know she does. Any rate, oh, share with your buddies uh, Tish Winter at the Artist Haven on YouTube. She's the one that does this artorama. But we're going to do a special show when she reaches 750. Um, and if you watch the show, which is, it's like a bunch of art buddies getting together and creating and stuff. So there's a lot of giggling, a lot of mischief. And as we, we've got a couple of characters in there that do a lot of snorts. And I, I will snort occasionally when I get to laugh. And I haven't snorted so much in my life as I have on this group. So Tish came up with this idea that, oh my gosh, this is going to be such a mess. For every time somebody snorts, we all take a drink. 
So this is a celebratory kind of adults only kind of thing. Keep that in mind. But we're still gonna art through this. So it should be um it should be pretty entertaining. And I'm hoping that my art buddy from uh ATD, Erica, will come and join us and do one. And it sounds like she's going to. So it could be a whole mess of fun. So share um with your friends and all that uh the link for tish winters the artist haven and i'll have that link in my description so we got to get to 750 and i think she's at 705 right now and she's been working really really hard at that all right i'm gonna bring you in for a close-up pretty soon all right let me bring you guys in for a close-up all right zoom in I think I was a little heavy handed with the paint pen and that's probably why it is showing some hairline cracks. However, I kind of like it in this application. I don't know, it gives it a little extra texture to it and this has already got a lot of things going on. The heavy outline keeps it all together. Got a little shading on there. My typical outline when I do illustrations. And I like how the cells are in the uh, the horns on the up the nose. Kind of make that stand out. So overall, very very happy. And I got some smoke going on there. All it needs is a flood coat, and he's done. All right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, but definitely hit the bell to get notified next time I put a video up. Oh, hey, before you leave, check my Etsy page because I've got a lot of these pieces of art up on Etsy, and he's going to be up there soon too. Later.